right so <clears throat> again thank you very much so let me share my screen so i will quickly go over <clears throat> the app that i'm going to actually or the set of apps that actually i'm going to uh, demonstrate today so those who attended last um, office hour session so at last in last session we actually covered um, a graphql demo where you would have a, a, a graphql trigger which actually then internally calls or make a call to the a third party service and actually you are able to uh, query the required or required data uh, from the two apis uh, based on uh, uh, based on the uh, the query that the client has sent you so this is the same app that i'm leveraging for this particular uh, demo the only change what i have done is instead of actually directly calling uh, those uh, services what i did was uh, i actually decided to move that logic of actually querying the third party service to the lambda functions so in this particular demo uh, i created two lambda functions uh, one is actually get post lambda function and get user lambda function so let me quickly go over these two functions so how they look like from the flogo perspective so in flogo when you actually want to push your flogo application as a lambda function you need to use this uh, lambda trigger so the lambda trigger is where the set of a configurations you provide uh, one of the very important configuration is the lambda connection so basically uh, this lambda uh, let me just quickly show you the lambda connection so this lambda connection today uh, i provided the access key and the uh, access id and the secret key so uh, I, I, since i'm using i'm an administrator for this account right so i have full access to the lambda so i can deploy the lambda or i can run execute the lambda functions but if you are not the admin for your um, uh, your account then make sure that you have lambda execution permissions uh, uh, for the uh, the iam credentials that you would uh, put in into this connection uh, now let's go back to the post uh, method so here what i'm doing is actually once i receive uh, uh, an event on the lambda what i do is i just log that and then what i do is i make a two calls one is actually to get all the post based on the id user id that i'm going to send so if you notice here i have mapped the user id that i get back so if you really check quickly the output uh, of this uh, trigger so trigger this is the standard uh, output of the lambda trigger one of the thing to note here is the payload where what you get is actually is the user id now that user id is something i'm passing to the flow and then it makes the call it gets the data it makes another call for the same user id it gets the data and eventually it actually does what it does it actually merge both these data together and actually send it back uh, to the uh, the caller in that case with the app which would be running on the kubernetes same thing for the user if i just want to query a uh, user the same thing i have lambda trigger i just call the uh, the api with the given user id and whatever uh, response i get back i just actually return it back from the lambda function and if you go back to the uh, this particular app so you can see here that i just call the lambda function whatever the result i get back i just return it back i'm not doing anything fancy here is it's a pretty straightforward app okay so what i will do is i will uh, first actually push this app uh, both lambda apps and the uh, this a uh, uh, graphql demo uh, app to the kubernetes i will run this application end to end and then we can actually go over how we actually configure certain aspects of uh, of of the application so that we can actually able to call the lambda function as well as able to uh, 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 able to actually use the config map and uh, prometheus okay so i, I for that purpose i built two simple scripts so i will just quickly walk you through the six scripts here so first thing let's take a look at the lambda deployment script so it is pretty straightforward and simple i think i already have it open here lambda deploy yes so it's pretty straightforward as you could see that i'm using uh, flogo enterprise 2.7 and what i'm doing is actually i'm building everything from the command line i'm not using ui to build any of those so for that uh, purpose i already exported the apps that i built in the design time and i put them in this directory so what i'm doing is actually i'm using the builder to build the uh, lambda function the only thing to note here is that since 
uh, Lambda is all Linux first. I'm saying that, hey, build a Linux binary. So that's why I'm building the Linux binary. I'm zipping that because that's what is needed in order to push this uh, uh, function, uh, push this uh, Lambda uh, Flogo application to Lambda. So I'm zipping that and then I'm using the AWS CLI just to actually push that uh, uh, application uh, to, to the Lambda. So you can see that. Same thing for the another application, which is a user. So I'm doing this. So let's quickly run this script. Okay, so first thing is it will actually build the binaries, uh, Linux binaries, then it will zip them and then it will just push that to the AWS. So while that is happening, one of the thing I want to actually um, note, I uh, uh, want to show you here is this application. So what I have done is actually for these application connections, what I'm doing is for the, because in order to invoke a Lambda function, you need actually an ARN. So what I'm doing is here actually I'm using uh, uh, the application property so that I can override this actually ARN uh, using the uh, uh, using the external configuration. So in this case the config map. Now if I go to the application properties, you can see that uh, I haven't provided any uh, values here. What I just said is actually is it to be overridden to be overridden because eventually when I'm going to push this app, I want to actually map the property or the values for these properties from the config map. So uh, that's for the demo purpose only. So let's quickly go back and see that yes. So now you can see that my both the functions are now pushed to the uh, Lambda. Now I can go back here and I just quickly uh, see here. Okay, so I see that there are two functions. Okay, so get post function and get user function. Right, so the, yeah, so obviously we haven't invoked it, right? So it will be back, okay, so. Okay, that's about it. Now, what we want to do is actually we want to take this function ARNs that we just got back from the Lambda and we want to actually uh, put that into the config map and then map that config map values to the Flogo application when we are going to actually push that to the uh, Kubernetes. So uh, what I will do is I will take these values. Okay, and what I have done as part of a Kubernetes is, so I created this file. So typically you can create or generate this file uh, using CLI. So let me just show you that quickly. So I just delete this file. What you can do is, since it's a Mac environment, what I have done is I have built a, a Mac binary uh, for this, just for the demo purpose. So minus minus export props env. So this particular uh, option is available for any application that you built uh, today. So when you do this, what it does, it does it actually generates a, a env property files for you. So you don't need to actually manually create this file. It will just generate that for you. So you go and open it. So you would notice that actually my, all the application properties, which are defined now, obviously that application properties include the connection uh, properties as well as the application properties that you define there. So you could see that uh, the application properties are obviously um, exported and the value is what value is configured there, that is to be overridden. So now let's use these values, the values that we get back uh, 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 and replace those uh, there. So this is for get post function. So I go here and get post function. I replace this value with the actual ARN that AWS actually created for uh, Lambda function. And I take this. Done. Now what we're going to do is actually, now we are going to go to the Kubernetes deploy. Okay, so this is done. I will first run that script and then um, I will walk you through that script, uh, what I'm doing there. So first let me run that. So it's the same thing I'm doing as part of this script as well. I'm building the application binary. I'm building application Docker image. 
then I'm actually pushing the application Docker image to GCP because my Kubernetes is working on uh, running on the GCP. And, and then it is gonna actually push my application uh, to, the, uh, to the Kubernetes, which is running on the GCP. All right, so while it is running, I will quickly go over the script. So uh, you can see that it's already pushed and it is already created. And one of the thing you notice here is that it also created the config back. Now let's quickly go over and see uh, what that script does. So obviously it's the same thing. It creates the binary, Linux binary, obviously. Uh, then it pushed that, it build the Docker image, push that to the Kubernetes. And this is something I'm just doing here. So if you notice here, what I'm doing is I'm creating a Kubernetes config map uh, named flogo-demo with the application property that we just saw, actually we just created and where we substituted values. Now, uh, all after that, what I'm doing is I'm just pushing my application YAML, uh, my application to actually the Kubernetes. Now let's quickly take a look at the app YAML. So a few things to note, actually, I'm also creating a service because I want to access that service application from outside. So I, I'm creating a load balancer type Kubernetes service for my app where I did the port mapping. The other interesting thing to note here is the Prometheus annotations. So what I have done is I've deployed a Prometheus server on the Kubernetes and I, 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 I set up a Grafana dashboard on, on my local machine, which is now actually pointing to the uh, uh, to Prometheus, which is running on the Kubernetes. And there are a few things to note. A is actually you need to set certain um, environment variables uh, the prominent one, because we want to use the Prometheus. So I said that, hey, I want to use Prometheus. This actually uh, 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 management port is needed because the, all the Prometheus metrics is actually collected on the, collected by the separate server. So that server is actually started on the 7.7 and this port must match with the, this port. So that's how actually the Prometheus scraping logic would know that from where to actually call the metrics endpoint. And uh, obviously this this actually denotes to or indicates to runtime that hey uh, the application properties are actually coming from the environment variable so you just resolve them and obviously this is the current uh, container ports that i am actually uh, exposing and this is where what i'm doing is i'm linking my application to the config map so uh, that's where i'm saying that hey you know what i want to actually use this config map or the all the properties defined as part of that config map uh, and i want to inject them into the uh, this uh, applications pod, uh, pod. So typically the way config map works is actually whenever you link uh, any config maps uh, to the application, whatever the properties defined in that config map are injected as environment variable into your uh, uh, pod or, or, or in your container runtime. Okay, so this is a very simplistic application YAML that uh, uh, I, I used. So let's quickly try to now run this application. So obviously we need a external IP uh, in order to actually call that uh, service. So let me get the external IP. So I'm just using this uh, desktop version of a playground. So let me clean this. Okay, luckily I got the same in font. Okay, so Obviously there is nothing. Let's now build some queries. Okay, so I say it's, first I will say get post and I say user ID is three. And for user ID actually, uh, what I'm saying is that, hey, I want to get the post ID and for user itself, I want to get some more details about like name and a website. Okay, that is for a get post. Now, what I'm gonna do is the get user. That is another field or operation that you could do, uh, invoke on that particular application. So I will say again for user ID three, I want to get some details about the user like his ID, name, phone number and maybe a website and email. Let's try off this, okay? Now that's about it. So let's 
So obviously you can see that now I got the reply back. Right now, let's confirm that it is indeed uh, going to uh, uh, to the Lambda and Kubernetes. So first thing what we could do is we can go to the workloads in, in the Kubernetes dashboard. Okay, let me see. Okay, so clusters. Hmm. Interesting. So somehow cluster is not available now. Okay. Let me see again. Okay, so something is happening here. Oh, so it is updating seriously now. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so we can meanwhile go to the Lambda. Uh, let's find, okay, so I go to the, let's say, get post monitoring. Okay, so you can see that it called multiple times. Now let's take a look at a quickly a logs for that function. Okay, so the latest is this today. Okay, so you could see that actually uh, this particular Flogo app actually started in 10 milliseconds. You could notice here. And then it got back uh, the reply. So obviously it, the first time it would be of a high, which is actually we are saying talking about uh, uh, 678. The reason being actually because it, it there would be some cold start involved. So if you notice here, that cold start took almost uh, 200 milliseconds. So that's why you see that the total duration taken by that flow, uh, that Lambda app uh, is, is around actually 680 milliseconds. But when you execute that next time, you should see much faster as compared to what it is right now. Okay, now uh, that's the first function. So let's go back and uh, let's go back to the user functions too. Go to monitoring and just quickly watch it in the CloudWatch, the latest. Again, same thing, it took around 12 milliseconds to start and uh, this one actually took around uh, 324 milliseconds, uh, 324 milliseconds to actually return back the reply. Okay, so let's go back to the Kubernetes. Hope it is back. Mm, okay, so it seems like it is still updating while, okay. All right, so that is fine. So the other thing I just wanted to show is now uh, what we did was actually we pushed the <coughs> Flogo app to the Kubernetes uh, using and we map the values of application property using config map. Now, uh, how actually it is, um, how this you can monitor all these statistics actually in the Prometheus, right? And using the Grafana dashboard. So as I said, actually my Prometheus server is already running uh, running uh, on, on the Kubernetes, same Kubernetes cluster. And uh, as I said, actually, as I said, right? So the only thing what I did is the, I did these two annotations which actually and uh, set this application uh, environment, uh, environment variable. So this thing combined indicates or tells uh, Flogo runtime that, hey, we want to actually uh, use the Prometheus for the uh, metrics collection. Now let's go back quickly to the uh, Grafana dashboard. So as you could see here, right? So the, I created a, a two dashboards. One is the activity stats and one is the flow stats. So what I'm doing is uh, for, uh, for given app, right? So, okay, so for this app, this flow, right? So these are the count, the number of times that particular flow actually got executed, right? So successfully, so you can see that this one actually executed five times. This one got executed for five times because it's the same. And for each flow and each activity, you could go and just see here uh, the statistics, how many times they got executed. So obviously they all will be five, five. 
so let's let's play around a bit uh, on this so what i do is i will just take this out and i will just call uh, this function multiple times or this uh, this method multiple times so let's see uh, username let me add a username here okay so obviously it's better simplistic let me call it multiple times now we should see here uh, this activity starts okay so it's a get user okay so sync type is yeah one minute is probably a way to wait let's change this type to 10 seconds Yeah, now you can see that, right? That it, it went all the way up uh, from five to almost, let me see, get users. Yeah, six actually. And this point of time they created six and let's see the get post, get users, this, yeah, so six times yes all right so that's about it you can actually create these custom dashboards in grafana and actually try and monitor uh, all the flow uh, flow statistics so we already put a uh, put up a good document uh, in in the uh, where we actually listed all set of queries or commonly used queries that you could use to actually monitor your flow apps so it's already documented um, as part of our product documentation so you can actually use these set of queries uh, to actually build this nice dashboards for the flow applications and uh, you could uh, able to actually uh, get uh, a monitor uh, or get a metrics for the flow application uh, which are running uh, doesn't matter where they're running in the containers or in, in the uh, in you even for that matter in the containers too uh, sorry uh, serverless frameworks so let me just go back and just see okay it's back hope i can go back to my workload yeah here we go so let me just quickly go to the container logs okay so okay so you can see that the in in general actually flow application or flow engine takes around 10 to 12 milliseconds to start so it's very quick and you can see that actually the number of requests that being sent to this actually uh, instance so uh, there were seven eight actually the ones we invoked okay so i think that's about it uh, for today uh, I, I think if there are any questions yeah we we can we can discuss that Hey, thanks so much for uh, running with this, Vijay. Um, yeah, no worries. This was particularly helpful. So, yeah, I've any aspect or any... So, I've got a question. So this, this you were showing using Flogo Enterprise, right? Yeah, I'm showing the, uh, yeah, yes, it is a Flogo Enterprise. And could you have deployed the same application in Tipco Cloud? Same application, yes because we support these capabilities in the TCO, So yes, we, we, can, okay. we can deploy that, yeah. And then would you, how would you have gotten those, that log information? Just thinking about how you would set up the monitors, would you use TIB CLI to get the application logs to feed into Prometheus? So currently Prometheus is something not supported in the TCI. So obviously you can run these okay. applications in TCI, but uh, Prometheus, yeah, we actually that capability is already there in the TCI, but definitely uh, we just need a, uh, a capability to actually get them out. Uh, so the way uh, Kubernetes, the, it works seamlessly in Kubernetes because Kubernetes, the way wow. I install this Prometheus server is actually it, uh, it actually auto scrape all the application pods to actually and pull the metrics from the container so that it is able to collect all that data. So Obviously, we need a similar kind of a capability in TCI where we can able to um, 
start some scraping service, which actually go and uh, scrape all the containers and able to collect the metrics from those container running containers, and then uh, you can then stream it or sync it to push it to the Grafana or uh, any any other tooling for that matter. Okay, thank you. Hey, Vijay, maybe, uh, maybe you want to speak about uh, places where we can get examples or samples, maybe the GitHub repository for Flogo Awesome and yeah, those ones. Yeah, we, we, typically, yeah, we, we try to put yeah, most of the our examples and everything on the, uh, I believe pretty much uh, everyone aware of it, but I'll just show you quickly. So yeah, TCF Flogo is actually the typically um, uh, the repo where actually we try to put the samples and everything. So there are quite a few samples which are already there, but obviously these are very progress specific samples, but not uh, about deploying or deployment artifacts like uh, deploying to the Kubernetes and all those things. But all those things are already nicely documented. Uh, so if you want to push it to the Lambda, you want to push it to the uh, uh, any any serverless over deployments versus the container deployments, we have a very dedicated sections. Uh, in in our doc where you can uh, you can actually read this and it should be help you actually to build the flow apps and then run them uh, on these container platforms the same thing is with the serverless so currently it's a lambda but in future we we might add few more uh, platforms here uh, but definitely we're gonna uh, push all these samples uh, onto the uh, this flow repo so that if anyone wants to actually Refer them quickly, they can just uh, use them and just uh, get started. Hey, Mark, Mark has a, yeah, Mark has a request if you can share the demo assets from today on that as well. Yeah, definitely. We are recording this, so uh, we will definitely share the link uh, once it is available. Hey, thanks for this, Vijay. I had a quick question. Um, I think this is helpful, and thanks for sharing the GitHub. Um, I was kind of looking through some of the commonly used queries and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I remember getting something that I didn't find in any of the documentation. And I was wondering, um, I know it shows you for like failures of flows and kind of like, you know, the total time and things like that. But mm -hmm. I saw a particular command dealing with event queue and something about like better performance and increasing the size. I was just wondering, is that something that is still one of the Prometheus commands that's supported because, um, I hadn't really seen anything and uh, I don't think I ever like asked again on this specifically. Yeah, I would like to understand it more actually. So definitely we can chat offline and then definitely I would like to understand actually what, what the issue is and what exactly kind of a metrics you're looking for. So uh, yeah, and, it yeah. gave me like a message of current queue size being 20. Yeah, yeah. So like that, that is okay. So, so I'll tell you what that is actually that is more see basically engine typically push the um, events and there is a collector uh, in this case is a Prometheus is one of the collector who collects the event right so basically the way go works is actually go works of the uh, uh, the channels and the go routines so what happens is typically when the channel is full where there is a no space right for more events so it like let's say con consumer is actually producer is producing really fast but consumer is probably slow into consuming yeah. those events right in that case right uh, uh, because that queue, the channel size is something is a configurable. So that's why the, we have that environment variable. So sometimes in certain scenarios, uh, it, it, it quite possible that actually your consumer or the listener in this case, right, is a slow in actually reading the data from the channel. So that, uh, uh, so that where we, what we are saying is that if you often see that message, you are probably better to increase the size of channel so that, uh, 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 that you would be able to actually fastly process because it might have the impact on the performance because what happens is when the channel is full, right? Then in that case, we actually the same go routine actually try to deliver uh, the event uh, or the process that event uh, gotcha. uh, for the Ill listener, right? So definitely there is a performance hit because typically I would just push the event to the uh, channel and then the current go routine will go back and do what it does, right? Because uh, we typically want listeners to be decoupled from the what actual business logic or the flow is being executed, right? So 
that's that's okay. not there, but definitely. And so, if you do something like that, you'd probably be increasing like the app size and other like it would have kind of uh, that. No, 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 that's well. what I'm saying. So you okay. don't need to worry about the memory or something. But the, I, I'm I'm pretty much sure that I print a environment variable name there, which says that you set that variable because I believe default size is ten or twenty. Uh, that is the best ca best case scenario size. But if you increase to hundred, let's say. Uh, you wouldn't be able, you wouldn't see that message again. Again, so definitely you have to try. I know that. In sometimes you will see that if you are getting lot of events, I believe that's what you are trying, right? Especially yeah, definitely. TCM, <laughs> I believe so. So you are yeah. getting yeah, yeah. So you are you are really really stress testing actually. So obviously in those cases, if you are sending millions, hundreds of uh, events, or generating hundreds of events, and then. It is bound to actually get that message. So definitely. Yeah, I think um, we're just trying to break things at this point sometimes by pushing the limits and seeing. Yeah, which is a good thing actually. We definitely time. want those kind of a cases where we just want to see how sustainable we are uh, at runtime okay. and what what uh, tuning we can do to actually make it more uh, 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 better and performant. So that's thank you actually for doing that. I'm really happy that you're doing it. So <laughs> for breaking. Yeah, which is good thing actually. So yeah. Definitely, if you see any issues, performance issues, or these kind of issues, definitely you can uh, ping me on the Slack and we can chat. Okay, and just one other little question, because I don't really remember specifically, but enabling things like Prometheus, it does increase your app size, but it's not very significant, right? Like it's it's maybe only like two megs or something like that, or do I yeah, have so that best, Yeah, based on our, uh, our testing so far, so the performance hit is around two to three percent if you enable prometheus or those kind of things not more than that okay but uh, yeah cool good stuff thank you yeah thank you <clears throat> awesome thanks so much vijay awesome. and thanks everyone for joining yeah thank you guys thank you for joining mm -hmm.